Welcome back to the world of cars versus aircraft. We've already seen the ultimate drag test between Michael Schumacher's Ferrari and the mighty Eurofighter. But what if you throw in a few twists and turns? What if you make it a test of high speed agility? To find some answers, we've come to the Croft Racing Circuit in North Yorkshire, from where the Canadian Air Force flew Wellington and Lancaster bombers in raids on Germany during World War II. But today, my opposition will be the workhorse of every modern-day Air Force. We've swapped wings for blades because I'm going to race a helicopter. But not any helicopter. I'm going to race one of the fastest and most agile helicopters in the world. It weighs just 1,400 kilos. Its turbine revs to 25,000 RPM. It's got 500 horsepower. This is the 190 mile an hour Gazelle. I am the lightning. I am the spy. This Anglo-French project first flew over 30 years ago and has been used by the Army, the Navy and the Air Force, both for reconnaissance and as a tank-busting gunship. Available ex-military for about 200 grand, it's the ultimate track day machine for the skies. take up the challenge, I'll be driving Porsche's latest 911, which only has 381 horsepower, over 100 less than the Gazelle's, only revs to 8,200 RPM and weighs exactly the same. But as that little badge under the rear wing tells you, this is no ordinary 911. It's the all-new track-honed GT3 with uprated brakes, stiffened suspension, titanium con rods, a close ratio gearbox and more downforce. Add a roll cage, hip-hugging seats and right here, right now, it's the ultimate track day car. But enough of the showboating. A quick lap time requires a different approach. To get the most out of a car on a track, you need to be as gentle with it as you can. Find that smooth racing line. And then be as progressive as possible with all the three major controls, whether it's the brakes, the steering, or the throttle. By contrast, the complexities of driving a helicopter would baffle the everyday motorist. Ex-RAF pilot Steve Unsworth will have to worry about altitude, airspeed, wind direction, rotor pitch, rotor revs, yaw, telegraph poles and the simple fact that all helicopters are inherently unstable. If you released all the controls of a car, you'd simply coast to a halt. Release all of the controls in a helicopter for just three seconds and you'd plummet into the ground. Just going in a straight line is a major test of skill, so flying around a circuit is going to be an amazing feat of aeronautical agility. After a brief warming of tyres and turbines, it was off to a rolling start. And the race is on. And he's getting away from me down to the first corner. Corner coming up, rolling in, looking right. Find the power, the wind's picking me up. I need to be neat and tidy, try to volume back through this same corner, Hawthorne. Two, so I'm away. I've got this chicane, I need to lift. And he's got ahead of me. But now he's into the wind. And we're reeling him in. 120, 125, we're back underneath him. Don't get too much overstead, Diff. Jim Clark S is a little left and right, but I need to lift. Oh. 110 miles an hour, breaking now for this double right hander of Sunny. 
applying the power as we go round, skidding out, almost stopping as we turn into the wind. On the dirt! Now he's into the wind! Just the complex to survive! I've lost it wet! Whoa! He's nearly lost it there! That's it, I overcooked that one. First gear, hope I've lost too much time! Tight, hard left. He's there! He's got the wind behind him, he's catching! But... And we finished the win! <laughs> that was close. I nearly lost it on the last corner. But we did enough to beat the helicopter.